everyone, welcome to Move Well, Live Well. We get a number of people that come in here with issues regarding their wrist and their thumb. And what's happening with these folks, um, a lot of them, some of them are musicians, they're holding a flute for long periods of time, they're having pain in through this thumb area, forearm area, particularly right in through here, this radial, this is the radius of the forearm here, this radial area of the thumb and wrist. Uh, these can be carpenters, they can be uh, musicians like I was just saying, carpenters, that type of thing, uh, mechanics, and even therapists, you know, who use a lot of manual therapy, chiropractors, massage therapists, and even physical therapists have problems here. And what's happening is that the two tendons of the thumb, I don't know if you can see this on me, come a little closer here. If you can just kind of see this on me, can you see that? Can you see that? There's two tendons here, there's this tendon, right? And there's this tendon, and it helps to move the thumb. You can see that? Right. So these two tendons, they become inflamed. And there's actually a little tunnel here, a synovial sheath that these tendons run. And over time, with that repetitive use, uh, whatever activity they're doing, if it's become inflamed in there, and scar tissue has developed in there, and not only scar tissue, but adhesions. So then when they go to move it, it causes pain and discomfort because there's less space within that tunnel for those tendons to move. So, it's a condition known as de Quervain syndrome. Um, I don't know who de Quervain is. If you know who de Quervain is, drop it off in the comment section below as far as who that guy was. But anyway, so they're having pain and discomfort in here. How do you fix that? How do you change that problem there so that way you don't continue to have these issues and go about your day and go about your life? Well, there are four steps that you can do to help alleviate this problem in through here. One of them, the first step, is cross friction. So you can kind of see the tendons on me. You may have to come up a little closer. I like using a table, because then I can let my arm kind of hang off the table and I can let it move around and stuff. So I have my forearms on the table like this. And so what I can do here at first, so those tendons right there, I'm just doing using my thumb, and I'm just doing a little cross friction across those tendons. Again, this is to your tolerance. Sometimes it's very, very tender in here, so you're gonna have to either ease up the pressure or increase the pressure depending on the sensitivity. And you do a little cross friction across that for 30 seconds to about a minute or so. And you can do that up to you know every hour uh, uh, for the day. So that's cross friction, that's the first step. And then if you can tolerate that, you move on to the next step, which is a stretch. So what you do, is you put your thumb right here. You put your thumb, kind of grasp your thumb like that, and then you move your hand. This is ulnar deviation of the hand, so you're moving your hand towards the ulna like that. And you may feel a little pressure, because this is actually, this is called Eikhoff's test. It's a variation of Finkelstein's test. Now Finkelstein uh, uh, was a surgeon, and there was a test that he, uh, invented to test for the Quervain syndrome. And essentially what it is, is the examiner takes your thumb like this and pulls it this way like that. And if you feel pain in through here, that's a good sign that you have de Quervain's syndrome or de Quervain's tenosynovitis. Uh, the other variation of that is Eikhoff's, where you put your thumb in here Sometimes you get a little false positive on here because this really puts it into a stretch. So I like using it as a stretch. And what you do is you put your thumb in there like this and you go into ulnar deviation just like that. And then you, you don't want to, you want to just get a little, maybe a little bit of pain. You don't want to push it all the way into pain to feel just a little bit of discomfort and then come back. So relatively pain-free ranges as you do this. 10 to 15 repetitions. You can do this frequently as every hour again, to your tolerance. So I could, right there, I, even me, I can feel a stretch in through there. It's a little bit discomfort, but you wanna stop where you feel a little bit discomfort and back off, and then over time, it's gonna get better and better. So that's step two, or the next stage. Now step three is a tendon release. So what tendon release therapy is, is you remember like the tendons we were showing you here, what you do, you come into contraction. You may have to come a little closer in here. So you come into contraction here and you use your thumb 
And you can use lotion, you can use coconut oil, uh, something that's, that'll uh, lubricate this area a little bit if you want. So you take your thumb and then you slowly go into ulnar deviation and rub your thumb over those tendons as you go into a stretch. See that? So contract, put your thumb there, and then you're gonna rub your thumb down that ten those tendons to open that up. See that? Do that again, 10 to 15 repetitions. Um, and then when you go into the next fourth phase is you take a weight. This is just a two pound weight. Uh, you can use a can of soup to start with. A can of soup is relatively about a pound or something like that. And as you get better and better, you just increase the weight. So this is a weight and what you're gonna do, you're gonna go, you're gonna put the weight in the opposite hand. You're gonna go into contraction. See that? This is radial deviation. All right, you're gonna put the weight in your hand and you're gonna slowly bring that into, this is eccentric loading, so negatives. Uh, those bodybuilders and uh, people who weight train, they're familiar with negatives. So you're working the negative portion of the movement. This is concentric, right? You're concentric, concentric, concentrically uh, contracting into radial deviation. You put the weight in and you go into eccentric this is ulnar deviation. See that? And as you get better and better, again, 10 to 15 repetitions, as you get stronger and stronger, it's gonna start, re these therapies will help to remodel that area and increase that space within that tunnel in which those tendons run into. And that way, the pain starts to decrease, you get increased strength in there, you get remodeling of those tendons, the querbane goes away. Anyway, if you have any questions with the Quervain syndrome, again, put in the comment section if you knew, if it's the comment section below if you know who the Quervain was. That'd be kind of neat to know. If you have any questions with this video, drop it off in the comment section below. If you're new to this channel, hit subscribe. And when you hit subscribe, make sure you hit that bell notification button because that'll keep you in the loop as to future videos coming here at Move Well, Live Well. And that way you can continue to move well, live well. And I know you know people who have wrist and thumb pain. See if they have the Quervain syndrome. Send this video to them so that way they can benefit from this video and that way they can continue to move well, live well also. And give us a thumbs up. It lets us know you care. Anyway, we thank you for watching. We appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.